down we have arrived at the Gobbins Visitor Centre. Uh, our tour around the Gobbins is from half past one and these trips last for uh, a couple of hours and they're tour guided along the, the coastal path and this is the impressive uh, Gobbins Visitor Centre that you uh, have to come to uh, buy your tickets and get your tour guide and then they take you by minibus to uh, the Gobbins entrance and you uh, take a walk from there. So it's all organised and uh, laid out. Uh, great emphasis on health and safety. You have to wear, wear the right footwear. You ha are given a, a helmet uh, to wear and you're not allowed to carry bags on the walks either. Uh, so it's a large car park and children's play area down below. So if you arrive a wee bit early, you know. Plus there's a, an exhibition centre about the Gobbins inside here which I'm just going to have a wee look at now. I like the uh, the decals on the uh, minibus. Excellent. So we've got a gift shop, as you would expect, on the entrance here. Here. We are here. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the Gobbins is. Uh, there's the Gobbins Road, so it must be along this this coastline. cafe here and then we've got story of the Gobbins here. Now strange fantastic forms beaten into deep recesses worked out into islands and hollowed into caves. This is the uh, exhibition centre. Oh, I'm looking at it the wrong way. And it's uh, showing the flora, the history and the flora and fauna of this whole region. In 1902, Edwardian, and the path was part of the vision of Barclay Dean Wise. And the entrance to the gardens is called the Wise Eye Entrance, as far as, far as I know. And he was a, a chief railway engineer, and the whole idea was to attract um, tourists, visitors from Belfast and beyond by train. And the railway companies organised excursion trips right along this whole coastline. Whitehead was very, very popular in those days, Edward Victorian days and Edwardian days. Whitehead, the town that Wise built.
1901 work starts on the first pass at the Gobbins. And it was opened for the first time. And this was a, a major engineering feat for those days. Aye, there's Wise's eye there. And this is detailing all the habitat. And there's uh, the stretch of coastline that we'll be walking on. Headless Port, Kraken Cave, uh, Otter Cave, uh, reflecting the wildlife. Well, not the Kraken, it wouldn't be wildlife. And the tubular bridge system is emphasised there. Something about chalky foundations. There's Gillymont down below. That's an oak of some sort. Cliffs are 22 metres higher than Titanic. They're all about the Tudor Bridge. And you can see that they're wearing their steel helmets there. Or plastic helmets, not. It's quite a, an advanced construction for those particular days. And puffins uh, nesting on this coastline. Probably all nested by this time of year. And this is the way things were. People People, this is what people wore on their heads, um, uh, booters and, and, and felt hats. That looks like a... Can he wake up there? I'm not too sure. Otter cave. And this is emphasising the dangers of the uh, the walk because it has been closed uh, due to frequent landslips, and that's why we are uh, having to wear the hard hats. Which it's sensible enough. So, interactive uh, exhibition. See part of the, the, uh, the handrails uh, not looking so good there. After a while, mm -hmm. talking about the demise, uh, why it fell into disrepair. It was very expensive to maintain and during the 1930s people hadn't got the money to come and um, visit because there was an entrance uh, fee. So it fell, fell into disrepair and <clears throat> this is the Gobbins reimagined. Many local people worked tirelessly to get the path restored and chief amongst those was this guy here, John Lennon. Now, not the, uh, the Beatles' John Lennon, <clears throat> obviously John H. Lennon from County Down, and he was a filmmaker, <clears throat> a historian, lecturer, par excellence, and uh, it was his vision, and, uh, well, it was greatly his vision to get the, uh, the path reopened, and probably without him it wouldn't have happened. So, well done to him. He didn't see it uh, being opened himself because uh, they died before that. Builders worked in perilous conditions in biting rain and wind up to 20 metres above the sea level. And uh, <laughs> a wee man standing there in a bowler hat, would you? 
Oh my goodness. The miracle of engineering, it's uh, it was a Herculean task of building the path. Chulur Bridge walkway, 0.6 metres wide, the bridge weighs 6.5 tonnes, lowered into position. And uh, this is the end and now, so this is comparing what it was. Workers wore hobnail boots, trousers and shirts. They used simple ropes to support their weight. How they ever did this, and here's what uh, health and safety dictates today. Climbing harnesses, headgear. Adults 15, concessions 12, uh, family 38, and registered cars 3. And this is the wee tour information briefing uh, sheet that you get. Sensible precautions and things, you know, that they don't really want you doing.